What's up, boysioneers and boysionettes? So I, I have like the serious Godzilla blues. I mean, and I blame Shin Godzilla for um, for putting me in that state, <laughs> in that state of mind. So now, with that all being said, now I'm just gonna go right back to the very beginning, to the very first movie that started this whole thing. Um, so you know, like I, it's been a while since I've rewatched, since I watched this movie. And watching it again, I'm like, I didn't realize how short it was. Because back then when I was a kid, when I was like nine, like about like nine years old and I watched it, it felt like a really long movie because I kept wanting Godzilla to show up. Because I, this wasn't the first Godzilla movie I ever watched. I mean, God, um, so finally getting to around to this movie, I'm like, um, I didn't appreciate the human element, you know, or, um, of, of this uh, movie at all. I was too young to really understand it. I was just like, um, can I just see Godzilla already? Please? I'm tired of watching these people talk. <laughs> but now that I'm older, I have a much stronger appreciation for it and what um, the media represents. And it represented a time where um, Japan, you know, like was dealt with the atom bomb and how this movie represented that and how Godzilla was a metaphor of, um, you know, for, you know, like, what, how destructive, you know, like, the, you know, the nuclear, you know, missiles and nuclear bombs are, and, um, and yeah, and, um, and his reputation does, um, precede him, <laughs> but, um, yeah, and, and re-watching it, and, and I'm like, yeah, this movie is really dark and really hollow, and, it's probably like the probably the most emotional Godzilla movie to date. Like yeah, even to this date, and it holds up to that bar. And for me, this movie still holds up. And this is probably the only black and white movie that I would sit through. One of the very few black and white movies I would sit through. Um, I mean, like now, if I if I were to sit through some sit this somebody who has never seen a Godzilla movie sit them through this movie, they'd probably go like, oh, look at him, he's so cute. <laughs> I mean, like, the way Godzilla looks, but at that time, I, I lock my mind in at that time, like, of how, you know, like, that was, like, state of the art back then, like, where it would, it would be terrible, it's terrifying to most people, like, when they watch it, and then you see him, you know, you see him walking around, just tearing everything up, and everything, you know, and just breathing his atomic, you know, his atomic breath on everything, and just setting just barbecuing, you know, Tokyo, like, seriously, um, but, um, I do like how the, I watched the, I watched the U.S. version of this movie, and, um, that's the only one I've watched, I didn't see the Japanese version, not, not that I wouldn't want to watch it, but I just never got around to watching it, and I don't know where to find it, but, um, the U.S. version with Raymond Burr, um, where they, how to introduce this character, you know, like, where it's the aftermath of, um, you know the the, the the destruction of Tokyo, and um and then you see him at the hospital, and then every and then boom, like it. That's one of the scenes that really hit me. Is like when you see him being carried into the hospital, hearing children, you know, crying and seeing them injured and people just in horror. I mean, like and traumatized. I mean that that stuck with me. Like that you know that part of me movie stuck with me, and. From there on, we rewind all the way back to how we got to that point. Um, so, yeah, another thing that really, really got to me is like when you see a mom holding her children, you know, like in the middle of, of, of the destruction in Tokyo, and, I, and I'm thinking she's saying a prayer in Japanese, but no, I mean, like, I found out later on that she was saying to her kids, um, Hang on, we will we'll be with your daddy soon. And I'm like, wow, that is really, really, really dark. Like, really. Oh man. And another thing that I um that seemed that um that I would have liked to learn a bit more was um Sarazawa inventing the oxygen destroyer. You don't really he doesn't really say why he did it or or whatnot or anything like that. He just shows um and, and, and Miko um. Like, I have something to show you, um, you can't tell anybody else. And then that, that's it. Promise me you won't tell anyone else. I mean, that that's it. That's it. We don't know what the, this thing did. She, We see her freaking out like she like like she's scared shitless. Like, ah! 
<laughs> and we don't know until later on in the movie of what that, what 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 did this thing do? And it killed the fish. I mean, the fish is nothing but nothing but bones. And um, and then that's where she eventually um, breaks the promise. And then it's like, yeah, he has a weapon that could kill Godzilla. And um, and he reluctantly agrees to let them use that weapon against Godzilla. Um, so. What I don't understand is, um, you made a weapon that could basically destroy all life, almost as, you know, like, probably is more threatening than the atomic bomb, um, yet, you don't want it, to, you don't want it to get into the wrong hands, but what were you, what were your intentions on when you made this weapon, hmm? when you made the oxygen destroyer, like, what was his intentions, why did he make it, I mean, like, we didn't really get to that, you know, it's just like, oh, I'm, um, I got something. You know, he, he showed her what it can do, and he doesn't want anybody to know about it. Like, but why did you make it? Like, what were you planning to do with it? Like, like I can understand, like, if, if he if he knew of Godzilla before anybody else, and, and, he's, and then he's, you know, trying to come up with a way to get rid of him. You know, I can understand that, but, ugh. I mean, like, what were you planning to do with it before everybody was aware of Godzilla's existence? I mean, like, you know, like, ah, uh, I mean, like, you have to think about these things, you know, like, maybe, maybe there were, maybe there were better explained in the Japanese version, and I guess in the U.S. version it was cut out, and it just, and, it, and us over here at the U.S. dropped the ball on that, maybe, um, and, um, Rewatching this, I don't think Raymond Burr's presence was necessary, but I guess it was a, you know, a way to get people in the U.S. to go see this movie because I guess at that time it's like, oh Raymond Burr, I love, I, I, I love that guy. I mean, I gotta see this movie because it's gonna be great if he's in the movie. I mean, maybe that's, that's why they had him in the movie to get you know people wanting to see it. Um, but, um. You know, Godzilla was the star of the movie, and you didn't need Raymond Burr at all. Not at all. You just needed, you know, the big guy in there doing his thing and fucking shit up. And, um, yeah, so, now that I've seen it, I have a much more stronger appreciation to it for what it is, the human element and everything, because that's what made The Walking Dead so successful was the human element of the story. So, um... Yeah, from there on, he becomes like a, a bit of an he comes an icon, and and they make and they make him you know like better tone for for the kids like for like movies to come, but yeah, this is the first you know like adult setting uh, Godzilla movie, probably the most adult Godzilla movie like ever because not one there's not one funny scene in the movie, everything is serious and emotional and everything i mean like like there is no humor in this movie whatsoever i don't and and the characters barely have laughter in this movie too i mean it's just like very 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 freaking emo and really good reason for a very good reason i should say but um yeah i mean like i didn't realize of how short the this the u.s version was i mean like i don't know i mean like i don't know like like it, the, the movie couldn't have been that filled. I mean, Shin Godzilla was a bit filled with the whole, you know, political talk and, and all that stuff. Where, but they could have shortened that down. But um, yeah, I, I guess you have to get the feel of what they what they would go through, like the you know the to take care of a disaster like like Godzilla. But without any further ado, this this movie here, Godzilla King of the Monsters, gets uh, four chair spans out of five. One, two, three. Four solid chair spins. So, yeah. So I plan to review the um, Godzilla 1985 at some point soon. So keep on the lookout for that. And uh, feel free to tell me um, what did you? What was your favorite Godzilla movie? Um, I have to think about that one because I I have a lot of them that I do enjoy watching that still hold up to this day. And this is one of them. So if you guys enjoyed my review, make sure you thumb up the video and make sure you click subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching as always. Peace out, y'all. <laughs>